So here we got the pitman arm, the idler arm, and a gear puller. You also need some common mechanic tools such as a ratchet set, a wrench set, handy tools like a pair of pliers, screwdriver, and in my case, an angle grinder. In time, these parts will get loose. You can see the play or the slop in the idler arm and the pitman arm. You're also going to want to check the rest of your steering system, like your tie rods, they just as easily get wore out and go bad. It's always a good idea to soak your parts down with some penetrating oil, especially if your vehicle is rusty like mine. I am unbolting the idler arm assembly from the frame of the vehicle. You cannot fit the gear puller on the lower nut without removing it. The gearbox in which the pitman arm is attached to will also be removed the same way. Doing this first is not necessary, however it does help give a little bit of wiggle room on the relay rod. I like to put tissue paper down into the socket, it keeps the bolt from falling down into the frame. Here I am pulling the pin out. If it breaks off, you could drill it out. It's pretty soft metal. Now removing the idler arm and pitman arm nuts where they connect to the relay rod. Now here we've got our gear puller. Make sure that it's on there good and centered. Now make sure to stand out of the way. This thing is under a lot of pressure and anything could go flying. You can now pull the idler arm out. I'm going to store it off to the side for later. Now this one went smoothly. However, sometimes you could run into problems, as you will see coming up. This is what happens when you don't have the right size gear puller, for I was further out of the way and did not get to see what the camera is seeing. Doing this I deform the bolt in such a way that the gear puller will never be able to sit on the bolt properly, and will always force it to pop back off. I drilled this bolt out to make the head of the shaft concave. It is very important that you try to keep it as centered as possible. Now with the right size gear puller you shouldn't have any problems, but that's not always the case. This here where the pitman arm attaches to the gearbox is where I broke two gear pullers. And my half inch drive. So I brought out my three quarter inch ratchet set. A little bit of heat always helps, however I would advise against it. There are rubber seals in the bottom of the gearbox in which you could end up with a power steering leak or even worse a gearbox failure. So do it at your own risk. This is me stripping out the second gear puller. In this case your best bet is to pull out the gearbox and cut off the pitman arm with an angle grinder. Here I am pulling off this plastic cover so I could get to the power steering lines. Oh yeah, and let's remove this fan shroud, for it doesn't look like the power steering pump could come out any other way, it just wouldn't fit. Try not to damage or fold in any of the fins on the radiator, for that would affect the efficiency in which the car cools, as it affects the airflow going through the radiator, more restriction, less airflow. Now I am taking off the power steering pump lines. Take note as to which one goes where, for there is a pressurized line and a return line. Be careful as the lines could break. This one I'm going to have to get a replacement part for from the auto parts store. Removing the pinch bolt from the intermediate shaft coupling. Now I could have spun this around 180 and took it off from the top.
removing the gearbox from the steering shaft. With the pitman arm off to the side, I decided to spin it straight so I could get this gearbox out of here easier. You know, it, 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 it seems like it's got paper, right? This is our power steering gearbox. And this is the fitting that I broke. In order to weaken the pitman arm, I cut into it with an angle grinder. I cut at an angle so I didn't grind into the pump itself. Got the brand new pitman arm, and just like the idler arm, it comes with a cotter pin and a grease fitting. You can put the grease fitting in now while it's convenient, and keep the cotter pin off to the side for later. The idler arm has a smooth shaft, and the pitman arm has gears, so make sure that the gears match up and it is the right one before you go mashing it on there. This is the pitman arm to gear nut, and it calls for 184 foot pounds of torque. Now on to the idler arm. Pull the old one off and put the new one on. Idler arm to idler arm assembly, 73 foot pounds of torque. Okay. Alright, now you're almost like completely straight. This here, the intermediate shaft pinch bolt, gets tightened down to 33 foot pounds of torque. This is the new line I've got from the auto parts store. I cut off the old part of the line where it's rubber and attached it to the new line, securing it with a hose clamp. To prevent damage from cross-threading, I would tighten it by hand until it's seated in the threads. Then use your wrench to tighten them down. I went ahead and bolted the gearbox down. I am bolting the idler arm assembly back down to the frame of the truck. This is pitman arm to relay rod nut, and it gets tightened down to 46 foot-pounds of torque. This is the idler arm to relay rod nut, and it also gets tightened down to 46 foot-pounds of torque. Install the cotter pin on both pitman arm and idler arm. Now that I got it back together, you can see the steering is smooth. No slop, no play. However, my steering shock absorber is making a little more noise than usual. She might be next. Well, running my truck for a couple seconds revealed yet another surprise. This power steering line busted off. I should be able to cut it back to where the rubber's good and reconnect it to align with the hose clamp. Putting the fan shroud in and bolting it back down. Make sure to put in the right fluid as recommended by the manufacturer. Top off your power steering fluid. Most vehicles are able to take power steering fluid or transmission fluid. 